started watching it on the news, you know, just it kind of getting closer and closer, and then um, just continued to watch it on in the major cities, right? Because we're pretty rural here in Warm Springs, so. Uh, we continued to have Sunday gatherings here in Warm Springs, and then um, right around March 15th, I think it was, we just decided as a congregation that it was safer to uh, go out and dig roots and whatever everyone needed to do at that time because it was root feast. And so then um, everyone left to uh, gather and harvest. Well, I kept watching the news as well and saw that the numbers just continued to grow and grow and uh, thanked uh, the community for taking action, even in ourselves, to start taking precautions and wearing masks even before it was a state mandate. So uh, that's what I had done at that time. And then through the last year and, and all that, that happened. Well, <clears throat> I've been working for myself for like about a year and a half. So the schedule I make is to be with elders, be in uh, class, teaching, creating materials uh, just from my home. Um, but with elders, I was going and seeing them at their homes. And to take more precaution, I would find myself stepping away from any cultural gatherings or gatherings at that time either, but that included cultural gatherings. And so I felt comfortable going to elders' homes because I knew I wasn't around anyone outside of my household. And I could tell they were comfortable too, uh, but there were also a couple of uh, children of those elders that you know were taking precautions of themselves and were being mindful that you know maybe on the phone is a better way to contact grandma and grandpa. Um, but we hadn't had established a phone or texting relationship either. So that kind of felt awkward at that time to, to now associate. Because uh, some elders really prefer that in-person connection and presence and, and just being in that moment. And that goes back to even when we were doing services at the Longhouse that some folks would say, well, what about those that can't make it? And I would also feel for them, you know, for all of them. And so sometimes people that couldn't make it on themselves, they would ask someone to help them. And so we've, we've done that in the community, helping them go into their homes and being able to help them get to the services. So, um, but when we had to completely slow down um, for the s safety of the community, um, I was wanting folks to just remember what they've learned in their time, right? I think a lot of times we rely on a drummer or a singer or a bell ringer so much that we don't have to learn those songs because they sing those songs. And when are we ever going to pick up the torch even in our own selves to learn one song, just one song? Whatever history that song has, right? could you at least make that effort to learn that song? And, and you just carry that one song through your life. And maybe you sing it in public and maybe you don't. But that song is still a part of you. And this was that opportunity for folks to really understand that, gosh, everybody is gone, right? All of our grandmas and grandpas are gone now. And now he, we're, here we are, 30s and 40s and 50s, trying to keep it together with those very few songs that we have now and you had elders that were even speaking before the pandemic that even in their time, how much they had lost by not fully putting forth, um, maybe, maybe not effort, that's the wrong word, but um, to, to really grasp more. And, and I've heard elders explain like, they came from a time too where you just don't ask questions, you just do as I say, do as you're told. And so some of those significations of songs or dances or stories got lost in there by only hearing them once. And <clears throat> relating that back to today of not having a phone relationship because I would have to hear that from them once in person. And so many times before the pandemic was if you want to learn, you have to come to my home. You come to our place of teaching. 
And that's why in and around the community, you have a couple of short houses here where elders do welcome students that have that willingness to learn, right? Because it's very modern to, all right, at eight o'clock in the morning, we're, on Wednesday, we're gonna have a class at the IHS, hypothetically, and so-and-so is gonna be there, and you should all be there, right? And their upbringing, that's very new to them. That's, that's a very new concept. And, and what we're not even also considering too is like the structure of a class, like how we structure it, desks, 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 and everyone looks to the front. Well, that's even foreign to our culture and a lot of cultures of the Americas, right? And so again, it just kind of goes all the way back to, we're talking about the pandemic, right? That there's no way that I felt comfortable to practice culture, learn culture online. I, that just, and I have no complaints about that because it works for a lot of students and I appreciate that. And it has worked for me too. Um, it's just that some of the elders, not all of the elders, had preferred that I hear it right from them in that moment, while present, physically. And so it is a different time now. And I appreciate that the vaccine is out and that elders are seeking it and that a lot have gotten their first. Some are very skeptical about the vaccine and I can understand that too. And at the same time, I'm, I'm hoping all of them, everyone who should have the vaccine should get the vaccine. And I really support that. And, and then, uh, and hopefully they will all have uh, great outcomes from that, right? Because there's also probably misinformation out there too. And I haven't sought to look any of that up, you know, but once in a while you'll hear of an allergic reaction or something more than that, right? Once in a great while, but you're talking hundreds of thousands, if not, you know, a million vaccines distributed and you hear one or two um, stories here and there. But I trust that things are gonna be okay and I, I trust that those that choose to get the vaccine um, is the best decision for them at that time in, in their lives. You know, so since everyone's had to be home during the pandemic, um, unfortunately some have lost their jobs and some industries have completely um, tanked during the pandemic and I really feel for all of them. Uh, here on the reservation, taking that out of the equation, those negative sides to the pandemic, I really appreciated that there was a lot of mothers and fathers that decided that they're gonna try something different than if it's Tuesday or Wednesday. That they're gonna go for a ride in the woods or down to the river or taking long road trips around even our seated area uh, for the Confederated Tribes. And hearing grandpas and grandmas sharing, oh, we just went for a ride and pointed at all the places they grew up digging or gathering or picking or hunting, whatever it may be. and. I could imagine too that in some of those feasts that some families had at home secluded with their households, um, that they were able to share maybe, you know, a long time ago, this was set right here because of this. And when we started going to such and such, they changed it to now this is the way it is. But we're, today we're gonna set it like this because this is how we remember it. And I know conversations have spurred up even in some of the homes and longhouses before the pandemic, but this was a lot of opportunity to, to express how your family directly does something or says something, you know, even in the language. Uh, like there are certain words that we grew up with uh, saying and phrases and it's very common in our family, in our side of the family, and then to hear other people in the community say it's slightly different, and that just went all the way back to some of our families, you know, were hundreds of miles away and haven't been relocated to the reservation. You may have slightly differences in dialect. Um, <clears throat> but going back into, you know, your families and being able to spend more time together, um, it was a, it was a great time to realize that that we are all stuck in this industrialized eight to five, Monday through Friday. And if you do the math, and if you, let's say you wanted all the rest that you can get 
in a day, you're probably getting that time with your family, what, three to four hours of the day, right? So 20 hours of the day, four of them are loving, nurturing, caring, teaching, four of those 20 hours. And we're so, we've been so tied into that, right? And, you, and then once we're not going to the eight to five, it gave us more time at home, but stuck in Zoom and email and all of that, you still were, okay, now you're at six hours of the day, right? That is nurturing, loving, caring, teaching your own kids, right? And even before the pandemic had broken out, I was always thinking of that, like all of my children, my two children, my two boys, their upbringing is mostly what the district decides. So they go to school 7.30 to 4, and then probably go to after school care, right? And how much of that day was all in a foreign language, right? It's all English. And then for me to get three hours of the day, the chishkin key, right, in our language, is just not enough. So they were stuck in that, and they're already being groomed for that industrialized, once I'm done with school, or maybe I won't go to school, but I should probably get a job, or maybe I won't get a job for however long, whatever. But that, <clears throat> going back to trying to get that sense of connection with what you're doing, right? Being present, even just to cook or to clean or to be with your children. All of that's been cut off for so many generations, right? And so that's why I took a leap of faith, you know, a couple of years ago to say, we're just going to, I'm just going to do this on my own, right? And then to just see some elders who have that time being at home to work on their little projects or teach their children, whoever stopped by to see them. But a lot of them had that time already, even before the pandemic. And so I had sought that opportunity to be with them, right? Because they were home and they were ready to teach in their environment. And so, and now here we are, right? And, and, and now we have to protect them and, and everyone who, who's in that vulnerable population. So that's a long answer to families staying together.